Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today is about keeping it simple and sometimes I need to remind myself that simple can be stunning as well. Now, this one here, just I want to use a few different um, products, not too many at all, keeping it to a minimum. And so I'm going to use this stamp. This is the Clematis Trio stamp today. These woodware stamps are such good value. They are large stamps, large photopolymer stamps, and the price point is brilliant. Then I'm going to use some Cools Smooth Cardstock. You could definitely color your own cardstock if you don't have any. For a long time, I colored all my own cardstock. Now I do keep a small, small supply of pre-colored cardstock like this, uh, which I do find really handy. So I've picked out two different uh, colors for that. And then I'm going to have some white embossing powder and some uh, Versamark ink, which is just a sticky embossing ink. Now, you can certainly do this on white paper. I have videos showing you how to do it on white paper. I'm using colored cardstock today because this just skips the whole coloring step. <laughs> now, as I said, this is going to be keeping it really, really simple today. I think these both look stunning. I'm going to do slightly different things to create two different cards, but I'm starting off with my stamping platform and I have got the uh, Clematis Trio stamp right there, pretty much in the middle, give or take. Then I am going to use a little embossing buddy bag. You can use cornstarch, all sorts of things, but this one uh, is a bought one, a purchased one. Then I use some Versamark sticky embossing ink. Any sticky embossing ink is going to work here. There are lots of different brands that are brilliant. I've tried a couple of them and... Um, some I like and some I prefer <laughs> that I like more. Um, then I'm going to stick this down, make sure I get a really good uh, imprint, but it's going to be pretty good. As long as your ink pad is pretty juicy or juicy enough, then it is going to give you a really good print. But being in the stamping platform, it did give me the option to do it a couple of times if need be. Now I'm using some white embossing powder. You could use gold, you could use silver, you could use, I mean, a blue, you could use anything. Go for gold, see what you've got in your stash and use that. Then I'm going to take the other, the lighter shade of blue, put it in exactly the same spot so I can use the grid in the background there. I use the Sizzix sticky grids. That's what I have on my stamping platform. It means that I don't have to use magnets anymore and my paper just sticks there. It also means that using the grid, I can get things in exactly the same place every time. So now that I've got this stamped on both of my pieces of cardstock in exactly the same place, I've put white embossing powder on both of these. I'm going to melt the embossing powder so it becomes even brighter. And then for the next part, you can choose a shape. I'm going to keep this super simple because that's sort of the road that I'm on today, but you could use any shape. I'm going to use circles and I love the infinity uh, die sets. The Hero Arts call them infinity dies, but they're stacking die sets. Lots of companies have them. Look out for the best deal. These ones are pretty good. I believe there's 18 or so dies in their stacking sets, which just means that there are lots of dies close together, really, really close together in size. So you can get the perfect size for what you would like. So I am going to choose one of these and it's going to be the same because we're going to use the fact that we have two of them to our advantage. So I'm choosing one of the circle dies. Now this is how I get them in exactly the same place. I tape them together with a little bit of low tech tape. This one is mint tape, which I purchased from scrapbook.com. It is perfect because not once have I had this tear my paper. Now that is what I need because at this point, ripping your paper or tearing your paper whilst taking off some washi tape or something like that is going to be really frustrating for me. So I run that through my die cutting machine. It's going to cut through both layers perfectly fine. I pop a little bit of mint tape on the circles just to keep them in the same place together. Now, even with the mint tape still on there, I'm going to cut off the edges just so that this gives me a nice border on my card base. You can absolutely skip this step if you want to keep it the full size of your card base, but I like that little white border and I think it's going to incorporate the white from the embossing really nicely. Then I can peel off all those extra little bits that are on the front. I don't need those tape anymore. Everything is held together and that's all I sort of needed it for. So once it comes to the sentiment, this one here, I believe this is a dream. I can't remember what this is called, but I believe this is, 
um, discontinued now from Catherine Paula. So I apologize, but any sentiment, this is one of those cards that's going to work well for lots of different occasions, lots of different sentiments. So use what you have. I have one that says, so proud of you. And you guys know that I need to stamp them more than once because look what happens here. I'm stamping along happily and then I drop it. <laughs> so that's okay. I can still use these, uh, maybe not the bottom one, but I am going to put on a layer of clear embossing powder. This is so that I can't smudge anything or muck it up. It's absolutely not necessary, but this is just more for me um, because this helps my sanity when I'm going through a card making process that uh, I don't get frustrated. So it's just one of those steps that I usually take. I'm going to melt all of these, including that little mishap down there. Then I'm actually going to use a little fishtail banner. This one is stitched and I'm going to cut out these sentiments just because this is a really pretty plain and simple card, I guess, that we're creating. We're going to add a few little, a few little bits and pieces. Now I'm going to give you a couple of little tips for just kind of jazzing up those cards that are kind of plain and simple. And one of them is this, even having a border die that has stitching on it, or if you want to draw on your stitching, it's all those little things which are just some finishing little touches for um, relatively straightforward, simple cards. So here you can see I'm going to switch these the other way around. So the dark blue is going with the light blue and the light blue is going with the dark blue. And I mean, if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to switch them, then you could just pop up that center layer. That would be fun as well. I'm going to use some waffle flower adhesive sheets. This is going to go on the back of the panel. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because I didn't want to adhere them down onto the card base just yet. I'm not finished with them. I'm not finished decorating them. So uh, at this point, if you didn't want to do uh, the steps that I'm going to do in a minute, you could just glue these straight down onto your uh, card base. But as I said, I want to add a little bit more to these gorgeous, simple cards. Uh, so that's why I'm using the... Uh, waffle flower adhesive sheets. These are just really thin double-sided adhesive sheets. Then I line this up. For this one I decide to go nice and flat so it's just one continuous line. You can't tell when you run your finger over it. You can't feel the join where the circle is. It's pretty cool actually. Very cool. And all of the embossing lines up of course because we have it in exactly the same place. So it's just one continuous gorgeous picture but with two different colors. Now for this one here, I'm going to put the adhesive sheets on the back. I just take off one of the release papers and then in a minute when I go to put these down, then I will take off the other side um, and one in, once I'm ready and then pop the center in this one. I've kept these both flat at the moment uh, at this stage, but of course you could pop that middle, that center piece up on some foam tape. Now, just as I was getting these sentiments ready to go, I'm cutting them off, making sure they fit, they're sort of in the right place. I want to add a little bit more. Now, this is a tip I think would be fabulous. Um, and you sort of just search through your drawer. If you have a little bit of lace, if you have a little bit of twine, if you have a little bit of ribbon, if you have a little bit of thread, I'm going to use some twine and I'm going to use some gold thread. Now, I could have done the same for both, but I thought it was fun just for you to see a couple of different options. Even some burlap twine would look gorgeous. Anything here that you can just sort of wrap around um, is really going to be stunning. It adds a lot to the card. Now this one here, I'm going to peel up a little bit of that backing sheet just so I can get the twine to stick. It just means I don't have to add any more adhesive. I wrap it around generally around three to four times depending on what I think looks nice. I'm going to sit my little sentiment sort of just above this as well. So once I have it all in place, I'm just going to pop this down, the backing back down, just so I can keep it there until I'm ready to go. The next one, I'm going to use the gold thread, and this is stunning. It's much more subtle um, because it's obviously very, very fine, but just that gold, that little bit of gold is stunning. Um, so I really, really like this look too. One is definitely a little more standoutish than the other, but I love them both equally. It's just different options. I think some lace here would look stunning, some um, burlap, I love that <laughs> burlap ribbon, so uh, if you know you watch my channel, you know I bring it out often, but I didn't for this time. Now this one here, because this is, the twine was a little bit thick, so I'm actually going to pop the back of this up on some foam tape. Uh, I was anticipating just using the adhesive that I had there, but honestly, 
the twine created a little bump so I'm going to pop it up on some foam tape and make sure that everything's nice and flat and even so looking good I'm doing two of these at the same time this one's fine the thread is so so thin that it doesn't even make a difference you can see that gorgeous white border that we've created there works really well with the white embossing powder and then all I have to do of course is stick down my little sentiments these are also popped up on foam tape so two cards, really simple, not too many supplies. They were pretty quick because there's no coloring involved or anything. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Of course, I will leave links to all the supplies down below, but I reckon that you've got pretty much everything you need to make this if you've been card making for a little minute. Thank you so much for joining me, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.